Hi! You've known that in the previous video about Graham's law concepts, we were able to derive the equation that governs this particular law. It says that the ratio of the rate of gas A and gas B is indirectly proportional to the square root of the inverse of the mass of gases A and B. As so what you have known in this equation, the rate of gas A, if A is in the numerator and B is in the denominator, on the other side of the equation, the molar mass is the reverse. Molar mass of gas B becomes the numerator, and then the molar mass of gas A is in the denominator. Then the ratio of these masses have to be square root because this equation came from the kinetic energies formula, one-half mv squared. So basically, it says that the fusion rate of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass ratio. And then the primary concept is if a gas effuses the particles that are more massive, more heavy, more heavy or heavier, move at a slower rate compared to the ones that are lighter. So basically, that's the concept behind this particular Graham's Law mathematical equation. And when we talk about rate, rate is always talking about a certain degree of time compared to with the amount. So when we talk about rate, rate of effusion is always equivalent to the amount of gas that transferred at a particular distance per unit time. But again, when you say rate, it should be always taking note of the time. So the slower it is, it takes a longer time to travel a certain displacement if it's lighter than the time it takes to travel a particular distance for this particular amount takes shorter amount of time so that's for rate of effusion so basically these two have to be remembered about graham's law of effusion so let me show you now three possible problems that you might want to know on how to solve this um, that involve the graham's law of equation so let's start with a mixture problem one the mixture of helium and methane gas is placed in an effusion apparatus. When we say effusion apparatus, it's an apparatus in which you put a hole where gases can possibly escape. So you need to calculate the ratio of the effusion rates. Now let's begin um, solving this problem. So we know that um, we have HE and CH4 and we are to get the ratio of the effusion rates. So therefore you have to use the expression of the volume involving the molar mass also because we know the gases. So we can put, because helium is given first, so we can have V of HE over the V of CH4. It matters that you put already what's your A and what's your B, to be clear. So our A here is helium, our B is CH4, and that's equal to the square root of molar mass, but this time you need to reverse. So it's going to be CH4 here over the molar mass of He in the subscript. So knowing this, we need to get, what do we need to get? We need to get this, the ratio of the volume, the whole thing, because it talks about, it's asking for the ratio. So that means we just need the molar mass of CH4 and the molar mass of He, in which case you need to just go to, the, to your periodic table and get its molar mass. So looking at the periodic table, we're able to determine the molar mass. And so for CH4, one carbon and four hydrogen, that is 16.05 grams per mole. And then HE is around four grams per mole. And that's equal to the ratio of VHE over V of CH4. So as you all know, the units can cancel out. So there's no unit for the ratio. Putting that in the calculator, take note, you have to divide 16.05 divided by 4 equals, and then don't forget the square root. So the square root of the quotient of 16.05 over 4 is equal to 2.00. And that is V, again, HE over VCH4 ratio. So how do we make a conclusion? What is the ratio of the effusion rates? You need to come up with a statement. So if we're going to cross multiply this particular answer, so if you cross multiply that, that's over 1 there, we're going to get the expression of VHE is equal to 2 
times the V of CH4. Now, what does this mean? We can conclude that helium, helium gas, effuses, so we're transforming this particular equation to a statement. So helium gas effuses two times as fast as CH4 gas. It makes sense because we know that helium tra travels faster because it's lighter. It weighs only 4 grams per mole. That's a molar mass. Well, CH4 has a molar mass of 16.05. So you would expect that the, that the rate of helium should be faster compared to the rate of CH4. That's how you check whether your answer makes sense. So if you are getting the, vol the, the volume, the rate of a lighter gas, the ratio has to be more than one. Let me repeat that. If you're looking for the rate of effusion of a certain gas that's lighter, then you need to get a ratio that's higher than one. And that becomes the rate of that gas compared to the other heavier gas. On the other hand, if we are to reverse our calculation, so say, for example, we go back to here, if your, if your numerator here is CH4 over HE, so this becomes HE over CH4, then you would expect your answer here to be less than 1. And so the statement will be reversed. Instead of HE here, it's going to become CH4, and this will become HE. So you would expect that the ratio here will be less than 1. And so if you make a statement, this number times as fast will be less than 1, in which when you multiply that, that will result to a slower rate. So take note of that particular technique of, of remembering your values, your ratio of your rate, based on the lightness or the heaviness of your gas particles. So please um, do this again on your notebook, write them down, and solve this once again. And if you have some questions, can you please leave a comment in this particular video? I will try my best to really answer you so that I would know what you're thinking. So kindly solve this on your own and try to understand it and make sure that you understand the concept. And then if you have any questions or confusions, kindly leave a comment below. Okay, so now we are going to proceed to the next problem, which is um about the the graham's law still so problem two um it talks about the rate already you are given the rate so it diffuses at a certain rate 0.4462 times and it's unknown so unknown is always denoted as x unknown gas that of nitrogen gas so you don't know one gas but you know the other gas at the same temperature Calculate the molar mass of the unknown sample of gas. Molar mass is mm. So basically, it's obvious that you're going to use, we're going to use our expression that we use in problem number one, in which, because unknown gas is mentioned first, so we can put it in the numerator. So the rate of an unknown gas over the rate of nitrogen gas, and take note, nitrogen is diatomic, so you need to consider it's always N2, and that's, that's equal to the square root of the molar mass of, of course, it's the reverse. So N2 is here over the molar mass of X. Now, why did we do this? Again, let us look at the problem. It says that an unknown gas effuses at a rate of 0 0.462 times. So if we are to transform this phrase to an equation form, the unknown gas effuses at a rate of 0. 462 times that of nitrogen gas. So transferring all the Vs on the left side, we can get an expression of Vx over Vn2 is equal to 0.462. So now we will be able to we will be able to transform this equation to solve for the molar mass. Now I want you to be able to solve this. So since you are to get the molar mass Molar mass of N2, please derive this if you can get this. Molar mass of N2 over molar mass of X square root is equal to 0.462. And I want to stop this video and look for the next series to solve this.
थैंक यू